In this lesson, we're going to practice more examples on converting a standard parabola equation, which is one like that, into the turning point form, which is one where it looks more like that over there. So remember we said in the previous video that the first step is to always make sure that the number in front of the x squared is a 1. If it's not, you need to get rid of that too. Now, how do we do that? Because what I've seen many students do is they just do this. They take out 2 as a common factor, but they ignore it, and then they carry on from there. What you guys are doing incorrectly is the following. In the section of maths called equations, when we try and solve, let's say we were trying to solve something like this. Notice how we would have had a zero on that side over here. So what was actually happening behind the scenes was that you're supposed to take out a 2, and then to get rid of this 2, it was very easy because you could just divide it on the left. And so 0 divided by 2, I'm just going to write this over here. 0 divided by 2 was just 0. So you could have 0 over there. And now look what happens. It appears that the 2 has disappeared. But when we are busy with graphs and we're not actually solving, then we don't have a 0 on the left. We have a f of x on the left. So we can't just ignore the 2. What we rather do is the following. We take out the 2 as a common factor, but we don't drop it. We leave it on the outside because we'll put it back later. So now what you can do is you can sort of ignore the 2. You can just leave it there. Make this bracket over here. And then just do the normal process that we did in the previous video. Okay, so that was where you write down x squared minus 2x. The minus 4 goes at the very end. Then we add a part in the middle that's going to go over here. So we're always going to say plus, then what are we going to plus? It's always going to be this number divided by 2 and then squared. And then you minus that same thing like that. I'm actually going to turn this outside bracket into big square brackets just so we don't forget what's what. Then we have f of x equals to 2. I'm not going to do anything with that. I've got my big square bracket. Then in the previous video, we saw that this part over here goes into a bracket. So we're going to make a smaller bracket now, which is within the bigger square bracket. And we put this one, and we put that one over there. Now minus 2 divided by 2 is just minus 1. Then what we do is we put this part over here on the calculator, uh, this part over there. And if you put that on the calculator, that'll give you minus 5. Now what we can do is put the 2 back into the bracket. So all it does is it lands up in the front over there, and then you multiply it with that number over there. So what we end up with is f of x equals to 2 bracket x minus 1 squared minus 10. And there we are finished. So notice our a value, which is in the front, that's a 2. Our p value is a 1, and our q value is minus 10. What this means for the graph is that its turning point would be at 1, so it's always that value, and minus 10. And that's it. Of course, you could have found the turning point by using x equals to minus b over 2a, and then plugging that answer into the original equation. But we also need to know how to do it using this method, because you do get marks for that in the exam. Here's another one, and this one's going to have some weird fractions, okay? It's very good to become comfortable with these fractions. So once again, the number in the front is not a 1, so you must take it out, but you can't drop it because this is not a 0. So you take it out like that, and then you have x squared minus 7 over 3x minus 2 over 3. See these ugly fractions we're getting? It's absolutely fine. Oh, and then we should probably make this a big square bracket instead. So then we're going to have x squared minus 7 over 3x. Then the minus 2 over 3, I'm going to put right at the end. Then over here, we're going to do that adding and minusing, or adding and subtracting. So we're going to say plus. Then we're going to take whatever this number is over 2. So it's going to look like this. Squared minus, and then minus 7 over 3 over 2 squared. OK, so now within the bigger square bracket, these three parts here, they're going to go into a smaller little bracket. So we take this x over here, and we take this part over here. So that's minus 7 over 3 over 2 squared. And then all of this gets typed in on the calculator. But now I need to show you a little problem that Casio calculators have. So you see how we've got minus 7 over 3 divided by 2. 
Now what many students do is they type it on their calculator like this and hey it does look correct but guys you've got to be so careful. What this is saying is minus 7 then there's the bigger line you can see that there's a bigger divide line and then it's 3 over 2. So what you're actually saying then is minus 7 divided by 3 over 2 but what you wanted to say was minus 7 over 3 divided by 2. So make sure you put the big line where it's supposed to go. So it should look like this instead. You push the fraction button but then push it again straight away now you can clearly see where the big line is okay it's the bottom one so we can go and say minus 7 now minus 7 over 3 and then we can put the 2 at the bottom and it should give us minus 7 over 6 okay so this whole part here we can write as minus 7 over 6 like that and then once again we should go put all of this in on the calculator and that's going to give you minus 73 over 36. We then put the 3 back. So the 3 is going to end up over there. And then the 3 is also going to multiply over there. So that's going to give us 3. X minus 7 over 6 squared minus. And so then you say 73 over 36 times by 3. And that's going to give us negative 73 over 12. And there we're done. So, seven over, so your turning point would be 7 over 6 and minus 73 over 12.